In this video, we are going to work on the report P2 tip. So let's see how we can do this. So I'm going to click on the plus button here to add a new page. What I'm going to do is to change the name of the page. So this is going to be the name. The next thing that we need to do is to indicate that this page is going to be for two tip. So what we need to do is to go to format. Then we have page information. I'm going to expand this and here you see the name of the page and we also have the page type. Now this is set to standard. I'm going to click on the drop down and pick tooltip. So I have to indicate that this is going to be a tooltip page. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to go to the canvas settings. Then here with the type we have tooltip. I'm going to change it and I'm going to pick custom. And I'm going to customize the size that we want to use. So here I'm going to increase the height to 290 and then the width I'm going to use 450. So this is the size that we want to use for the tooltip. Then I'll go to view. Then I'll go to page view and I'm going to pick fit to page. So I'm going to have enough space for me to design the visuals that I want to use as the tooltip page. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is to change the background. So I'll go to canvas background and then I'm going to pick this color here. Now with the transparency, I'm going to reduce it. And now we have this here. The next thing I'm going to do is to add a card visual. So I'll go to insert, I'll click on the drop down and I'm going to pick card visual. So I'm going to add some data, but here we are not interested in visualizing the data. So I'll click on add data and then I'm going to pick any of the measures that we have here. So I'm going to pick total cost. I'm going to resize this. Now I'll go to the format. Then I'll go to call out. I'm going to turn off the value and then I'm going to turn off the label. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to go to cut. So I'm going to expand this with a fill. I'm going to change the color and I'm going to use this. Then I'll go to border. I'm going to turn it off. Then I'll go to the accent bar and turn it on. Now I'm going to edit it. So I'm going to expand this. So here I want it to be on top. And then I'm going to increase the width and then change the color. So this is the color that we want to use. Then I'll go to shape and I'm going to change it from rectangle. Then I'm going to pick rounded rectangle. Now let's decrease this. So I'm going to use one. And now we have this here. The next thing I'm going to do is to turn off the background. So I'll go to size and style. Then I'm going to turn off the background. So now we have this here. Now let's resize it. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to add another card. So I'll go to insect. I'm going to add another card visual. Now let's resize this. So I'm going to bring it here. What I'm going to do next is to add the data that we want to visualize. So I'm going to click on add data. Then I'm going to add the total sales or the total revenue. Then I'm going to add the total orders. Then finally, I'm going to add the total profit. Now let's resize this. Now let's format this visualization. So I'll go to format. I'm going to collapse this. Then I'll go to call out. And then with the font, we are going to change it. So I'm going to pick Sego UI. And then with the size, we are going to use 18. 
then I'll come to the labels. I'm going to expand this and here I'm going to use 11. The next thing I'm going to do is to decrease the space between the label and the callout. So I'll scroll down and we have spacing. And I'm going to decrease that. Then I'll go back to the callout and I'm going to change the color. So I'm going to click on the drop down and this will be the color that I'm going to use. And then with the display unit, I'm going to do that in thousands. So we have this here. Now what I'm going to do is to collapse this. Then I'll go to shape. And then I'm going to change it from rectangle. And I'm going to pick rounded rectangle. I'm going to decrease the rounded corners to one or two. Now we have this here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to go to cut. So I'm going to expand this. Then I'm going to turn off the border. And then I'm going to change the color for the fill. So I'm going to click on the drop down and I'm going to pick this. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to increase the transparency. So we have this here. Now let's go to size and style and I'm going to turn off the background. So I'll go to size and style. So here we have the background. I'm going to turn it off. And now we have this here. Now let's collapse this. Now I'll go to call out and I'm going to change the color. So here I'm going to use white. And then with the labels, we are going to change it and then pick this. Now we have this for the label. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to add the icons. So I'm going to collapse the cut and then I'll go to image. Now I'm going to change it. First, we are going to look at the total revenue. So I'm going to pick revenue and then I'm going to turn on the image. So what I'm going to do is to pick the image. So I'm going to click on browse to add the file. So now I'm going to pick the shopping bag for the total revenue. So I'm going to click open. And now we have it here. Now let's format this. So with the position, I'm going to pick top. And then I'm going to decrease the size. So here I'm going to use 38. Maybe 40 is fine. And now we have this here. Now I'm going to change it from total revenue and I'm going to pick total orders. Then I'm going to pick the image for my PC. So I have already included these icons as part of this course. So I'm going to click open and now we have it here. Now what I'm going to do is to change it. So I'm going to change the position to top and then I'm going to set the size to 40. And now we have this here. Now let's change it to profit and then I'm going to pick the image. So we have this here for the profit. I'm going to click open. And now we have it here. I'm going to change the position as well and then pick top. And with the size, we are going to use 40. Now let's make it 41. And now we have it here. Now let's click outside. And this is what we have. The next thing that we are going to do is to add reference labels. So I'm going to maintain my selection. Then I'll go to reference labels. Now let me collapse the image. So I'll go to reference labels and here we have total revenue. So I'm going to add a label, which is going to be the total revenue for the previous year. So I'm going to click on add data. And then I'll go to the measures table and I'm going to pick total sales last year. So we have the total revenue for the previous year. Now we have it here. Now I'm going to change it and then pick total orders. And I'm going to add the total orders for the previous year. So we have total orders last or previous year. And then I'll go to profit and also pick the total profit for the previous year. So we have this here. Now what I'm going to do is to change the series to all. Then I'll come to title. Here I'm going to use 13 and then I'll come to the values and I'm going to decrease it to 8. 
Now the next thing I'm going to do is to change how the data is presented. So I'll go to layout. And here with the arrangement, we have rows by default. I'm going to change it and pick columns. The next thing I'm going to do is to go back. And then here with a series, I'm going to start with the revenue. So with the title, we are going to change it. So here I have to select the label. So I'm going to pick the total revenue for the previous year. So here, instead of using the field value, I'm going to change it and I'm going to pick custom. And I'm going to type versus prior year. Now let's reduce this a bit to 12. Then I'll go to the value. I'm going to expand this. And here with the display unit, I'm going to use thousands because here with the callout, we are using thousands. The next thing I'm going to do is to turn off the decimal places. Then I will go to a different label. So I'm going to change it to pick total orders. And then with the label, we have only one, which is the total orders for previous year. So here I'm going to change the field name to custom. And then I'm also going to make it versus prior year. Now I'm going to copy this so I can use it for the other ones. So I'm going to make this 12. And then I'll go to volume. And here with the display units, I'm going to pick thousands. Now I'm going to change it to a different label. So I'm going to pick profit. And here with the label, we have total profit for the previous year. And instead of using the field name, we are going to use custom. Then I'm going to paste what we copied. Now I'm going to make this 12 and then I'll go to value and with the display units, I'm going to pick thousands and then we do the decimal places. Now let's edit the one that we have for total revenue. So I'll change it from total profit to total revenue. Then I'm going to pick the total revenue for the previous year. So I'm going to paste what we have been using for the other ones. The next thing I'm going to do is to change the color of the label. So I'm going to pick this color here. Then I'm going to change it to the other ones. I'm going to pick this color. Then change it to profit and also pick this color. Now the next thing I'm going to do is look at the background and then the divider. So here I'm going to change it to all. And then I'll come down here and we have divider. So here I'm going to change the color and then pick this color here. And pick this. The next thing I will do is to go to background. I'm going to expand this and I'm going to change the color to white. Now let's click outside and take a look. Now everything is perfect. So what I'm going to do is to resize this. Now the last thing that we are going to do here is to add the name and then the description of the product that the user is going to hover to be able to show this tooltip. So if you go back to our executive summary, we have this card here, which is showing the product and the description of the product. So this is what we are going to use on the tooltip page. So I'm going to select it and then I'm going to copy. Then I'll come back to the tooltip page and I'm going to paste it. So I'm going to bring it up here. Now let's resize it. Now let's format this. So I'll go to size and style and then I'll go to padding. Here on the top, I'm going to move the padding. So this can go up. Now let's resize it. So the next thing I will do is to go to call out. And here with a series, we are going to pick the first product. This is what we have. So I'm going to decrease the size a bit and change the color. So we are going to use white. The next thing I will do is to go to the label. And here I'm going to change the color and I'm going to pick this. Now let's decrease the size as well. 
Now let's go to the callout and decrease it further. So we have this here. So this is going to be the tooltip page. Now let's see how we can add this to the slices. So I'll go to the product analysis. Then I'm going to select the slicer. And then I'll go to properties. Then we have two tips. So I'm going to turn it on and then expand it. So here we are going to use report page and we need to select the page that we want to use. So I'm going to click on the drop down, then pick the tool tip for product. Now when you hover, you'll be able to see the tool tip. Now let's go to the other product. So this is going to provide additional information to our users as they hover on each of the items that we have within the slicer. So this is where we are going to end the discussions on how to design a tooltip page. So first you need to design the tooltip page, then you can assign it to the visualization that you want to add. In our case, we added it to the slicer button. Now we can add it to any of the visualizations that we have. We can even select this visualization and then we go to properties and then here with a tooltip, we have report page. Then we can pick the tooltip that we have for product. So when you hover, you'll be able to see the same tooltip based on the product that you are going to hover. So this is how you'll be able to design report page tooltip. In the next video, we are going to finalize the dashboard. So see you in the next video.